The United States and the Republic of Korea claim the objective is to respond to the growing nuclear threat from the DPRK. But China insists the plan to deploy the U.S. Terminal High Altitude Area Defense Missile System, or THAAD, damages its security interests and threatens stability on the Korean Peninsula and in East Asia. And China is not alone. Russia says the deployment will not only escalate regional tensions, it would undermine Moscow's relationship with Seoul. Both Moscow and Beijing have agreed to work together to, quote, consider strengthening bilateral coordinating measures, unquote, to tackle the threat. There's much to talk about. Later, we'll get China's perspective. But first, joining us from Moscow is political analyst Dmitry Babich. With us here in Washington is Jenny Town. She's the assistant director of the U.S. Korea Institute at Johns Hopkins School of Advanced International Studies. And CCTV correspondent Eugene Jung joins us from Seoul, South Korea. Thanks to all of you for joining us. Jenny, let me start with you. China and Russia, as I've just said, expressed their opposition to the development of this anti-missile system. Why are they so concerned? Does this anti-missile system effectively render their missile system or attack system obsolete? It doesn't render it obsolete. What it is is it, it intercepts missiles as it's coming into um, the atmosphere. And so it's responding to a growing North Korea nuclear threat and a growingly aggressive North Korea nuclear threat. And what it is is it, it um, supplements um, their area missile defense to begin with, and so that it creates layers of defense to have both low altitude and high altitude measures to help um, prevent uh, and help minimize the damage that can be done from um, a missile attack on South Korea. So if a country attacks China, hypothetically, with a missile system, China would not have that capability to counterattack with its missile system? Um, if, if the country has the uh, anti-missile? If China has anti-missile systems, it would be the same uh, situation. And so this is really, again, the, the radars are there to detect if missiles are coming, have been launched, and to respond to that in order to prevent them from hitting the ground. Okay. Dimitri, what is uh, Russia's objection to the deployment of THAAD? Why is Moscow so concerned? Well, uh, Moscow actually has the same arguments as China. Uh, the problem is that the United States is simply using uh, the North Korean nuclear threat as a boogeyman in order to uh, render the Russian and Chinese uh, nuclear capability harmless. Uh, and uh, that is certainly not very good for the strategic stability in the region. Uh, that was stressed uh, in the statements of the Chinese foreign ministry, and the Russian foreign ministry agreed with that. Uh, the, the problem is not uh, just the anti-missiles uh, in South Korea. The problem is that the United States is creating an infrastructure uh, based on which there can be more and more uh, anti-missiles uh, deployed. And in the end, uh, these anti-missiles uh, may just uh, make uh, the Chinese uh, uh, nuclear capability absolutely uh, harmless. You know, then the strategic balance uh, will be destroyed and uh, uh, the United States will be uh, sort of tempted uh, into taking uh, more and more uh, aggressive measures towards China. We have already heard from the American officials, including the De Defense Secretary Ashton, that China is an enemy, that China is a threat uh, to the United States' interests in the Pacific. Uh, of course, in this context, the deployment of uh, Thawed uh, missiles in South Korea uh, is not something that will uh, that will make Russia and China happy. What do you make of that, Jenny? Is uh, the DPRK being used as an excuse here by the United States to get some kind of strategic advantage in that region? Um, I personally would say no, that it's not. I think what happens is that China and Russia underestimate the core security threat that North Korea poses to South Korea. And as an ally of South Korea, it is, and as a strategic ally, it's our responsibility to help with those defenses. Um, and, and so it's one of these issues where um, if you don't believe the threat is a core security threat, it's, you know, it's easy to kind of pose theories. Um, but at the same time, for the South Koreans, it's a very real threat. And it, like I said, it's a growingly aggressive. They're growing their capabilities. They're growing, you know, they're, they've just been testing their intermediate range ballistic missiles to hit the, you know, U.S. positions um, further in the Pacific as well. But, you know, every day the North Koreans are threatening South Korea. And the public is starting to feel this. 
um, as well. And so this is part of the response that the U.S. has to help bolster the defenses of our allies in the region and to deal with their security um, interests. Okay, let's bring in Eugene from Seoul. And Eugene, there have been protests in South Korea against the deployment of these anti-missile systems. Uh, there's been protests in Parliament, and in one demonstration on the streets, protesters shaved their heads. Is there much opposition in South Korea to this deployment, or are most South Koreans in support of it? Uh, well, that's right. Uh, th that was a very uh, graphic protest done on Monday this week, where around uh, 900 people uh, in Songju, the, the county where the anti-missile defense system is going to be deployed, uh, they shaved their heads to send a message uh, to the government, loud and clear, that they do not want SAD on the Korean Peninsula, and especially uh, not in their own county. Um, and nothing really brings people closer together that, than having a common uh, enemy, if you like. So with this SAD issue, the Songju residents have been, um, they've been organizing a nightly candlelit protest uh, outside the county office since they heard this announcement. And the turnout uh, has been uh, explosive each night. Uh, people there uh, told me when I was there early this month that the process of uh, uh, deciding on a suitable site uh, lacked uh, transparency. Um, it was not uh, democratic. And um, that site is just too uh, uncomfortably close to the county center and residential areas. Um, um, the defense minister, Han Mingu, went there on Wednesday for the first time in a month to uh, uh, persuade the residents, where he said uh, he'd be willing to consider other sites within Songju uh, if the residents gave a united voice to do so. Uh, so now the residents are discussing whether they should cave in and accept uh, or continue to say no to that. Um, but to look at the rest of the country, um, opinions have been split. Um, a recent um, uh, public opinion survey done by Gallup Korea conducted in early August uh, showed that 56% uh, of South Koreans are for the deployment, up 6% from one month ago uh, when the news of the SAD deployment was just announced. Um, in this month's survey, 31% uh, of the respondents were against. So uh, you can see that the public opinion is moving, but right now it's too early to tell where we're headed at the moment. Jenny, I want you to take a listen to what China's defense ministry said about the potential deployment of SAD. Let's watch this. We have made our stance of strong discontent and firm opposition quite clear to the deployment of the THAAD anti-missile system in Republic of Korea. We will closely follow related actions of the U.S. and ROK and will consider about necessary measures to safeguard China's national strategic security and strategic balance in the region. So there appears to be a definite you know, uh, concern in China about the deployment of the system, that it will undermine China's defense capabilities. Do you think that's a valid concern that the Chinese have? You know, it, when you talk about strategic balance, it's always hard to make those decisions. And, you know, it is one of those things where, you know, at the, at the core of this issue is really, again, the growing North Korean nuclear issue. And so, you know, part of this is if we could address that issue, um, more completely, then the that issue would be less of a concern and it could be something that is more negotiable in the process. But the problem is, is as that continues to grow and again, as it continues to be aggressive in, 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 in threatening both South Korea and the United States, um, it does become something that we have to respond to and, and in order to secure our strategic interests in the area. Should then there be more energy be put into uh, having a nuclear-free Korean peninsula? Absolutely. And, and dealing with North Korea's nuclear um, expansion. Um, and it is something that, you know, the U.S., China, Russia, and all the countries involved should be more actively um, pursuing rather than just focusing on the the consequences of this growing insecurity. Because again, the North Korean issue is really the source of the, of the growing insecurity, and that is a response to that. Okay, let's bring in Tian Wei, joining us now from Beijing. She's the anchor of CCTV's primetime talk program, World Insight. Tian Wei, thanks for joining us. Uh, let me ask you about the strategic balance that we've been talking about here between China and uh, the United States, for instance. Does China feel that that balance will be upset with the deployment of the THAAD system? Yes, indeed. As you said, uh, China, uh, not only from the official channels, but also people on the street are feeling 
the kinds of uh, balance that we have seen in the Asia Pacific region, particularly in Northeast Asia, is likely to be broken as a result, partly because of this. Uh, uh, and that's that's why people are concerned because uh, this implementation and deployment of that is giving the U.S. an advantage uh, to the region, particularly to China and Russia when it comes to security concerns. And also, it's a dip it is a diplomatic pity, shall we say, if I could use the word, uh, for China and South Korea. Two countries have been very much active over the past few years to uh, work on issues of common concern, including the Korean Peninsula. Having said that, though, there's also the trade and economic ties between the two countries that is very much likely uh, to be uh, the most stable in the region. And now that is likely to be also, in a way, influenced in a negative sense by the latest development. And many Chinese here feel this balance is likely to be broken. It is not just a military or strategic. It is also people-to-people -people ties and also a trade and economic ties. Now, Tianwei, the uh, United States has been making efforts to assure the Chinese that uh, they don't want to upset the balance here, the strategic balance. In fact, the U.S. Army Chief of Staff Mark Milley has been in China. He's been talking with his Chinese counterparts. Do you know what came of that meeting? Uh, I do not know necessarily at this moment the conclusion of that meeting. We are waiting for further information coming from the official side. But having said that, though, there has been a systematic distrust between China and the United States. Obviously, the two sides do not take each other's words. Uh, necessarily as the answer to the concerns they have toward one another. That has been a trend going on for quite a few years, particularly given the recent trend of uh, strategic balance, as the U.S. said, or a pivot to Asia. China is becoming ever more suspicious of what U.S. goals are. Certainly, there have been also South China Sea issue going on between the two countries. Certainly, the two militaries are uh, cooperating. They have been doing exchanges. These are likely to bring more benefits and also further the possibilities of trust. But at this moment, certainly the two countries do not take each other's words as necessarily the answer. Dimitri, if the United States goes ahead, if the THAAD system is deployed in South Korea, how does a country like Russia respond? What can it do? Uh, well, Russia will uh, forge a closer alliance with China in order to uh, resist this threat. And this is inevitable, because it's just laughable to hear from the United States that North Korea is a dangerous country when North Korea has not attacked anyone since 1953. Since that time, the United States attacked dozens of countries. In the last few years, the United States became much more aggressive than it had been in the 80s or in the 70s. So Russia and China have legitimate concerns. If I were Chinese, I would not trust uh, the, all of these military exchanges with the United States. The United States also had military exchanges with Russia, but that didn't prevent the United States from uh, helping a coup d'etat in Ukraine and installing a very anti-Russian regime there. So uh, there should be no trust to the United States if they try to deploy the thought system uh, I think Russia and China should protest vigorously, and they should support the part of public opinion in South Korea which is against the war and which wants uh, a negotiation with North Korea instead of just, uh, uh, you know, flexing the muscles. Let's remember that just a few years ago, uh, South Korea had a pacifist president, Kim Tae-jun, who managed to have a meeting with Kim Jong-il, you know, the uh, dictatorial leader of North Korea. Uh, now, the South Korean president is considered as a psychopath by uh, the North Korean media. And that's a very bad development, because South Korea and China and Russia, we simply can't afford a war uh, on the Korean Peninsula. That would be too huge a tragedy. There is no other solution but negotiation. And unfortunately, the United States and the pro-American government in South Korea headed by the daughter of a former South Korean dictator. Uh, they, they are not helping uh, things uh, by uh, making all of these belligerent moves against North Korea. OK, we're going to have to take a break right now. More of our conversation when we return. Stay with us. You're watching The Heat.